Okay, hi everybody. This is Griffin McElroy. I'm here with Travis McElroy. Hello, Travis McElroy. Uh, hi, I'm Travis McElroy. I'm um I'm the dungeon master for the Adventure Zone, the beloved dungeon master, I'd say, but I am not the music maker. I'm not the weaver of dreams. Boy howdy, uh the the system we have where I'm speaking to you, hot from Cincinnati, Ohio, recording your voice. Sending you my computer audio and my voice and recording the whole kit and caboodle is really strung together with twine and tape. And so there's a ver there's a version of this, Travis, where we put out this video and they can't like hear the music we're talking about. And that may be the funniest version of it. Oh, defo. Yes, yes, yes. If it's just like, and now listen to this. And it's yeah, just here, It's just nothing. Um, so this, uh, we wanted to sort of show you behind, uh, behind the music, how we make Taz music. Uh, Travis and I have not really necessarily gone this deep on it since you took over. Um, uh, hey, can you just real quick, just say how mad I am at VH1 for ruining the phrase behind the music. Yeah, they, like, they took it. Yeah, man, it's like, oh, no, what terrible stuff are they going to talk about? What happens on the tour bus, you know? Yeah, so um, we're going to try and watch our crosstalk because I know it's ducking Travis pretty bad. Um, but, yeah, we wanted to talk about it a little bit and sort of show show uh, around the scenes of Logic, which is what I use to uh, make the music for the show as a sort of, like, bonus. I need to – my mic, my uh, trackpad is, like, a mile away, and that's no good. Um, so I guess, Trav, if you have anything, like – uh, anything you want to say at the top? Any questions or anything? Like, we don't have anything really necessarily planned for this video, but I thought it would be a cool opportunity to kind of show a track kind of getting put together. Well, I think, so probably the best place to start, right? So I think that this will probably come out after the episode comes out, right? After episode 10, which we have already recorded. Right. Um, so let's start here. Like, I know that we're probably going to want some underscoring for the scene of Fitzroy and Fearbog in the unknown forest. Yeah, right? I, I figure uh, for that, I, uh, another thing to kind of keep in mind is like we recorded that episode yesterday and we are leaving for the Joko cruise tomorrow. So I don't have a ton of time to do that. I will probably whip up a uh, like alternate version of one of the like themes that I've already kind of put together, maybe like a known forest theme or something like that. Um, I was sort of thinking about underscoring the new semester as an idea, right? Like the, 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 I think we have campus music is a track that I've already made. And, um, I like the idea of having like a piece denoting a change of season or something. Okay. So how would you start with something like that? Well, uh, probably just like a lot of hand claps. Yeah. I do a lot of, uh, one E and a two E and a, no, um, I, start like whenever I'm making a song, a lot of the times I take a fragment of like a thing that I've already kind of just recorded. I have a lot of just like bullshit projects uh, in logic that are just kind of um, little shards of ideas, like little melodies or even just like instruments. I like uh, that I think could like be a cool sort of basis for a song. Uh, I recently got this like full size 88 key piano. And so that's been kind of helpful because I'll just sit down at that and diddle out some shit like this. Uh, I recorded uh, this kind of uh, piano melody and this, I like this. I named it a quiet night when it was just like nothing. Uh, and I'm going to try and play it. Uh, can you hear that? Yes, I can. So like I liked that as a I like that just sort of structure. I just like the way that that sounds and resolves. It sounds sort of dreamy and sleepy to me a little bit. Um, and thought it could be like a decent sort of pin for the for the sound of the new like semester. Now, do you normally like write some? Which which usually comes first for you, knowing the emotion you're trying to capture with the song or the song, and then you're like, oh, I know where that would go perfectly. Um, it depends on like whether or not I'm up against the wall, right? Uh, because if I'm like, if I'm out of time <laughs> or, and it's like, oh shit, I need something for the scene with the fear bulb and Fitzroy in the forest. Then it's like, then I'm writing for the tone. Right. But like, so, so this is like an example of like, I had this idea of this, uh, this sort of melody behind it, right? But a lot of the times for Taz Balance, what I did most of the time is dive into the loops that come with, well, GarageBand, but Logic Pro X is just like the upgraded version of uh, GarageBand. So these are all the loops. Have you fucked around in GarageBand at all, Trav? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have. 
I mean, here's the thing. Without the piano main, it ends up just being like a lot of loops, like you said, where like without any kind of backbone to it. It ends up just being a pile of muscles and blood, you know? Right, but it, you you can make entire songs out of muscles and blood, which I did a lot back in balance. So like Oh, I have to. I just I don't have the the kind of speed or the, the I don't have the vocabulary to do it, right? Where it's like, 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 like thing, but it's not bringing the right feeling to it. Yeah. It's, you are far more musical than I will ever. Like I don't play any instruments. Yeah, but you, you can fuck around in Garage Man. It makes it like it's easy and kind of fun. I'm trying to find. Hold on, let me see if I can. It's a little wild and a little strange. <laughs> There's somewhere on here is. Okay, look out. Next season of the Adventure Zone is just going to be a justified RPG. Yeah. Well, this is... Do you recognize this piece of music? I assume it's Dust, right? No, this is actually uh, Roswell's sort of theme, like the theme to... Uh, which is so funny because that's the... This particular sample is what I used to get called out for Darren Korb, who made uh, the soundtrack for Bastion. Do you play Bastion? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, has a song in that game that like sounds exactly like that. And it's because we used the same loop, I guess, at some point. Uh, so yeah, there's stuff like kind of all over uh, these loops. And, and so for balance, like I would find something, uh, let me see if I can find, there's like an ARP that I, do you recognize that? No. Let me slow it down a little bit and try again. That's the purple worm. Like that's the art behind purple worm. The entire like track. I don't want to break your heart, but it's been a long time since I listened to Taz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, so Play yeah, me something from the show I'm thinking about now. Yeah. Um. So yeah, for for Taz balance especially, like I would just kind of go through loops because I didn't really, I didn't know how to compose very well. So like a lot of that just came down to chopping up. I did a lot of like layering individual instruments, like you know something like this on top of it. Um, but I would go through those for inspiration, uh, and kind of like build it off of a core loop. I do very little of that now, um, in graduation. I do mostly just my own stuff because graduate, because th these loops are really good at putting together like electronic music, but there's not actually those guitar solos that I showed you, like that's it. And so yeah. like, that's not a whole lot to work with. Meanwhile, if you go into synths, it's like, like hundreds. Um, another thing that I can just sort of get inspired by like build a thing around is just an instrument itself so uh let me see if i can find um for amnesty uh, about maybe halfway through or so i found oh my dogs hey, there's travis's dogs a loop of some dogs there hey i'm trying to make art with griffin shut up um don't be mean to your dogs and they're beautiful idiots it's fine uh so this is massive. I can let's let's put this on hold for a second. I'm gonna no, edit I, this. I got it now. I got it now. Everything's fine now. The neighbors just came home, you see, and I think uh based off of nothing but my dog's reactions to them, they're serial killers. Uh so this is uh I think I actually found this during balance. This is a uh just like a piece of like this is a virtual instrument called massive. Uh that comes with like a ton of funky little uh, like things that you can make with it. I found this through a um, I watched this disaster piece panel where he like went through how he composed like Fez. Ooh, funky. <laughs> oh, that. That's a buzz box right there. What's that? So, uh, no, Griffin, don't play that too loud. I apologize. So yeah, I could, you know, maybe find uh, something in here that kind of like lights my fire. But halfway or so through, um, through uh, Amnesty, I found uh, this uh, thing called Auras from a company called Slate and Ash. And just every single one of these, it's made, it's like a virtual instrument, but instrument, but it's designed around like non-organic sounds. Uh -huh. um, and so all of these, 
Uh, yeah, load this up. Uh, all of these kind of, this, this instrument like single-handedly defined the sound of Amnesty. Uh, and it's made for like expressive keyboards. I have this like uh, rubber keyboard, so which I'm not playing, so this is going to sound a little bit off, but it lets you have like full control over like the, the timbre and the like intensity of it. Um, yeah, yeah, they yeah, all that's... They all kind of like have some sort of like, unsettling element like that uh like i'll tell you what dude i think you are selling yourself short by the way because like you keep saying like you could fuck around with with uh garage band for... but here's the thing like even this you're talking about putting together these things in in a very musical way like the thing is is i, I could maybe replicate 80 percent of it right but like i'm i'm listening to you talk the couple of times i've messed around with garage band i've literally like mess around with what was built into it the idea of like i'm going to go watch things to learn how to do it and download these other i would never do that that's, would, like, that's fair but i mean also in uh your defense i've been doing it for like six years now and you, you kind of just started um i i'm sorry what i should have said at the beginning of this is the reason that i don't play instruments like uh the piano or the guitar or anything is uh not for lack of ability is that i have zero patience to learn anything i'm not already good at that's part of the problem right there. This is really nice. I don't think I ever used this one. No, this is very like massage studio. Oh uh, yeah, I'm on that I'm on that Brian Eno shit right now. Oh, oh my god, sell this. This is like one of those songs that you buy on a CD at um like the Christian bookstore or something where you could ha it had like the big plastic display and you could press all the buttons to hear little samples of the CDs. I guess that was it. Here's Celtic Rain. Yeah, that, yes, exactly. It's Celtic Rain, the instrument. Uh, what really excites me, Travis, is this company, Slate Nash, just put out a new instrument uh, called Cycles that I got yesterday and don't know how it works, but oh. it seems pretty fucking cool. Uh, let me see if I can... Uh, I don't, I, yeah, I don't know how it works. It's all about like really abstract sequences kind of, um, let me see. Actually, you know what? Let me just do the loops and, uh, can do frets. So the, the frets is, uh, mostly like weird abstract acoustic sounds. Let me like move that out of the way. Uh, and it's got like some really funky shit going on in it that I think i I think would fit in pretty nice into graduation if it will load. There we go. What's, what's some stuff you've had a lot of fun with? Like, what's what's the theme that you're like, in graduation so far, that you're like, oh, that's it. Nailed that one. I'm proud of that one. I really like, like, I'm really happy with uh, with the Unbroken Chain. Like, yeah. that, that, that worked out really well. I can show that here in just a second. Like, but the, the so this is the new instrument. Uh, and it's just like... And all of these are linked to just keys on the MIDI keyboard uh, and you can play them like instruments but mostly like you can play these like weird loops which I thought it a lot I was like it almost sounds like you know like old timey like lutes and stuff where it's the, the strings are just a little loose yeah so there's a um, there is a chrono cross sort of inspiration here because it uses a lot of what Logic Pro X would call world instruments. Yeah. Um, this one's more like electric guitar, infinite reverb shit. Yeah. You're traveling uh, through a dream river. Yeah, let me see if I can. Uh, the, um, uh, the MIDI it's controls out. on this aren't working especially well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is what I'm like super excited about right now. You can also do, uh, drums with it and the drums are maybe not like, this is an example of like trying to figure out the feel. Like, I don't think the drums feel like graduation very much. They feel a lot like late game, uh, outer space amnesty shit. Uh, yeah. so I'm sad that I didn't have it back then. Um, let me, Again, wait for it to load. But yeah, I, like I have this, and this is fucking inspiring for me. Where I will find a sound that sounds really cool, and then I can just like base a song around that instrument. So, but Ooh. I want you to know that I heard that sound, and the phrase that popped in my head was "urban cave," and then I realized that that just means sewer. 
yeah, uh, it's fresh as hell. So I'm excited about this right now. That's what I'm currently currently feeling. Um, I ask you a question. Yes. So with graduation, I have been uh, in post editing in some like background sound effects. Some, yeah. How how do you feel about that? And you can be honest because like I come from a theater background, right? Where like in theater production if you have like a long scene in a tavern, right? And you don't have the underscoring of like people's voices, it's weird. Yeah. Uh, and so it feels right to me to put it in, but you didn't do stuff like that with Amnesty or Balance. I did not, no. And it's, I mean, it's just sort of a different uh, like editing ethos really. Like, I think that stuff is cool. I also think uh, it is, whenever you're like putting something in that like people are listening to, like I'm always super, super sensitive to that. Like I want it to sound, I, I think for me, it's a level of like quality control that I'm not necessarily able to, uh, to give to like an ongoing background track. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of purist about it, but I think it sounds good. Like, I think it sounds fine. Uh, mixing is, mixing is fucking hard, man. Like, uh, I, neither of us are like great at mixing. Um, the problem is, because this is what I've run into just in the first 10 episodes, right? Where it's like, if you listen on headphones versus your phone speaker versus your car speaker versus your computer speaker, they all sound different. Like, the thing is, is like, I'd be editing on headphones, right? And yeah. I'd be like, yeah, that sounds great, perfect. And then I'd be driving around and I'd put it on in my car and, like, I couldn't hear the background music or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah, I usually would, especially during, like, the late game, uh, like, episodes of Balance and Amnesty, like, listen to them on a few different things just to make sure it all sounded pretty pretty good. Yeah. Um, so, this is... This is that same track, right, with the piano. And I was having a little bit of, I, I, I put an ARP in. Like, I almost always put an arpeggio in, like, everything, because I think it, oh, shit, I just deleted the piano. Oh. Oh, no. Because uh, I think it sounds good. I, I just, it's, it is, you know, there are sort of basic building blocks to, um, especially, like, electronic music, and arpeggios are, uh, in, in my book, one of the best, most sort of dependable ones. Um, so I just... That's all it is. It's just a subtle little guy plucking around in the background, just a randomized art. Just gives it a little bit more of a percussive element that I really liked. So, uh, and then like- You're putting these songs together, do you picture little digital like musicians playing it? Of and course that, I was. Like, I got you, Griffin. Bing, yeah, bing, you got bing. to, you got to. Um, so yeah, this is like a half hour today that I was just kind of fucking around and I was trying to find other stuff to put in it. I put in a drum track, but uh, it, after just like messing around and, and what's cool about logic is you can just add a virtual drummer to it so it's funny that you bring up that uh that example uh of having a little virtual guy here let's put in a dubstep oh, drum jasper in yeah jasper's really good at it let's listen to what jasper thinks would sound good you know what jasper no you don't like that no i say try magnus oh you want magnus in there let's get magnus big boom edm in there Oh, this is what he thinks is good. And I can already just tell looking at this that it's not going to. I disagree. That's working for me. What about, uh, let's try one more. I want to hear uh, Ronnie's. Okay, I just wanted to point out you can fuck with all that like down here in a bunch of different cool ways. Oh, you can bring up the glow stick, huh? I can bring up the glow stick. Ronnie Electro Trap is uh, a frequent contributor to Taz, uh, especially Taz Balance. Let's see. Oh, Ronnie's bringing some weird stuff. Yeah, Ronnie is uh, uh, a legend, mate. Uh, but yeah, after fucking around with that and dropping a few like, dropping a few loops in, uh, I just didn't think like drums sounded great. But I found this uh, uh, collection of sort of synths called Lucky Seven. These, 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 and when it's blue, that's how you know it's a loop. So here's like a, um, here's like a, a, a sort of a chord background to to this synth and just listen and i thought that was like interesting like i thought that was doing some interesting stuff uh but then i added in this one and i really like the sound of this one on it but the um instrument itself is like way too abrasive for what this is so then it goes right 
Yeah. Uh, so I like that sound, right? I like that melody on top of what I've already got, but I don't like how abrasive it is. So I tried to just sort of play it by ear. Um, and then if I do that, I can switch the instrument, right? So I can make it anything. I could make it, uh, I can make it a vibraphone. See how that sounds. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, let me show you the world instruments because this is a lot of um, yeah. a lot of amnesty and a lot of graduation. Honestly, is just in the stringed section of world. So, like, tell me if this sounds familiar. Oh, that ain't right. Hold up. I'm, I again, our uh, setup for this is goofy. Yeah, there's the amnesty music. I, I'm going to embarrass myself by not remembering how to play it. Yeah. So that's the voice stuff. What's that? The voice list of that. Have you ever used voice it? Voice has some cool, like, um, uh, I think I've used this in maybe one or two things. What's cool about that one is you can change the intonation and change like, so Timo is like, Timo. it's like super pretty. It's super, super good. Uh, but you just, Timo. wait, huh? I should be able to change the, Timo. no. Okay. They just really want to sing Timo. I don't know. <laughs> They're like stuck on <laughs> Timo. Uh, I have some other, so if you click on user patches, these are all sounds that I have sort of tweaked with um either using like the built-in like sound engines inside of logic or the stuff i've downloaded like massive or like the slate nash stuff uh and there's a really cool this is uh all the aubrey shit sort of became this at the end uh a engine called 80 um let me see open up Uh, I really like all that. Uh, so bring Aubrey back for graduation, so you can make more music for her. Yeah, that sounds good. It was a good crossover. Uh, I ju I've just realized I deleted a track, <laughs> uh, this violin track of what I uh, where I like was with this song, which is unfortunate. Um, but I guess that's okay. I can mute this. So like, what I thought sounded good was like that melody over. The chords that I already had, but then I tried it with the violin. But then I was like, eh, that didn't really sound great. So let me let me duplicate that so I don't lose that uh, thing. I'm a very messy worker in here. And then you can uh, I can just open up the piano roll here, which you should be able to see. And let's see. Uh so this might be like a pretty dumb basic question, but do you have the keyboard hooked up to your computer and it just like records to to uh, GarageBand or whatever? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, my keyboard is not creating the sounds. My keyboard is a MIDI controller for the sounds in, in GarageBand or Logic, right? I'm just using it as basically a controller. No sound is coming from, wow, that's loud, huh? Let's just get rid of some of this shit. Because it's a violin. I don't want it to be all plucky, right? I'm trying to recreate what I did earlier today that I accidentally deleted, which is a shame. I can change the articulation on this. This is what I really like about these world instruments is that they have like a ton of cool sort of ways to tweak the sound. So uh, let me see if this is right. I did that and I was like, oh yeah. Like that's that's in there somewhere. So literally, this is all I do is I just sort of fuck how, around. How much time would you say you spend on each song? Like, how long does it take you to write a song on average? It's different for each one, but like, uh, if it's something that's going to be, I know, sort of anthemic that I am going to come back to, I usually try to spend a little bit more time on it. Uh, probably the song that took the most for the show so far was that villains track. The Because I thought, like, that's something that we will probably need to I'll use. I'll never use it again. 
Yeah, now um, that I know how much time you put into it, I'm never going to use it. No, I ask because this is really interesting and very informative. You're teaching me a lot, but it's just more and more making me think like, oh, I'll just like rip and do this. <laughs> I don't want it. This seems like a lot of work. Uh, but it's fun. Like I, I, I don't have like when I'm not working, right? If I if we have a, a day where we don't have a lot of recordings or whatever, and I have free time, I used to just spend that only playing video games, right? Like or or working on some other sort of like creative bullshit. And now uh, I still use it mostly to play video games, but just like wheeling over to the piano here uh, is like fun. Like it's fun to just kind of like dick around on it. And then if I find something, if I'm just like dicking around on it and I play something that I like, I just record it into logic really quick, which takes like a second. And then, you know, then it's, then it's something I can use professionally a bit later on. Mm. Uh, I think maybe we should wrap up. I think like this shows kind of enough of the process. This song is nowhere near done. Right. Uh, which is a shame because in like what, 16 hours we're leaving to go get on a boat. Um, but yeah. Uh, do you have any questions, Travis, before we log off? I found this to be very informed. What do you think is the funniest instrument? Well, uh, I got some sound fonts. I recently learned how to make, how to use sound fonts. Do you know what those are? Is that like what Ferris Bueller does or he uses the burps to make a song? You're not far off. You can just, but you can grab like sounds from different instruments, uh, from different like, animal crossing. Yeah. So like, this is KK Slider. Uh, let me see if I can. Uh, <laughs> uh, we need to have a funny little robot in so that yeah, that can be their theme. That's really good. Well, that's from Undertale, so that would be I would be sued promptly. I really like the Yoshi's Island vibraphone, but I haven't found an organic way to get it in. It all just sounds like funny robot music to me. Uh, yeah, right there. That's a funny robot. There's a great deal of Earthbound. The Earthbound shit, I like the sound of it, but it is also atonal. Like this is gonna sound bad. So, <laughs> welcome to my carnival. What is the one I like? I like Save the Miners. This has like a nice little breathy. Jeez. Oh boy. This does sound like it's a haunted carnival. I don't care for this one, but. Okay. Anyway. We've messed around enough. This is the this is the end. Thank you for watching. Thank you for becoming a member of the network. I hope this was in, enjoyable in some way and that it doesn't sound like complete dog shit. Um, yay. yay. Thank you all. See you later. Bye. Bye. Where's the button? There it is.